back for day 17 of the 100 horror films in 31 days. I got in six films today. Um, first up was Witch Hammer, 1969. This is a Czech film that I watched on the a streaming service, and it's about the witch trials in Morovia in the 1670s. And of course, uh, back in the 1700s, you had throughout Europe um, people parlaying the popularity of witches and religion and uh, basically their own ignorance to, to go about and try to promote themselves. It usually there was economics behind it, but basically people would go to the king or queen at the time and, and say, you need my services to get rid of these witches and that's how they made their money and their living off of burning alive and torturing people to confessing that they're witches. Sad commentary on our history, but it's true. The film's based on a novel, and uh, it was banned in Czechoslovakia after it was finished. Uh, it's, it's a slow and talky film, but it's still a pretty gripping one-time watch. I give it a 7 out of 10. Um, definitely something worth checking out. And there is a Blu-ray available, um, Region B. Next up is Blood Theater, directed by independent, low-budget director Richard, Rick Sloan, who did Hobgoblins. Uh, this is really, you know, we talk about inept movies and how fun they can be sometimes, so bad they're good. This is just inept. It wasn't, it wasn't fun, it wasn't good, it was inept. Um, you got, essentially what you've got is a series of murders going on in this abandoned theater that the owners are trying to renovate and uh, the, the killings are bad. I mean, one of the things you look for in these kind of slasher type films is great kills, iconic kills, but it was so ineptly done, it was just wasn't fun. And the acting was bad. Uh, yeah, not a, not a whole lot to recommend this. Mary Warnoff, who went on to do some pretty decent stuff in her career is, is in this. Made in 84, I think. It's 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 just, just bad. I mean, as as many of the Rick Sloan movies are, quite honestly. Nice release, though. As, as always with Vinegar Syndrome, you get some nice releases, great, great artwork. Uh, it's got a slew of special features. You know, one of the things I like, even when the, you get these bad movies, is going through the special features. I mean, get, delving into the mind of these type of films, the people that make these type of films, is a lot of fun, I think. Even when the movie's like total shit. Next up is another one that's bad, but this one's fun and good. Horror Beach Party, 1968-69, directed by Del Tenney. Uh, ludicrous ludicrous this is the famous hot dog i call it the hot dog when i was a kid the hot dog monster was was famous and he's got you know you can see him right there he's got these he's these pipes coming out of his mouth we called him the hot dog monster uh terrorizing kids on the beach and in between terrorizing kids on the beach you get these 60s really cringeworthy 60s tunes and people dine, dancing in the in the style of the 60s it's it's a hoot a lot of fun uh, this Severn release is just awesome it's got all kinds of stuff like a making of documentary and excellent outstanding release from um, Severn 7 out of 10 so bad it's good next up we've got a British film that uh, I love quite a bit. That's Blood on Satan's Claw. Because this is one I grew up with. Um, Piers Haggard directed this. He did a lot of BBC type TV shows. He did Quatermass and a number of things. Not much, not much horror. Um, this is a um, screen bound release. I've never heard of them. It's a, I guess it's a British company. Linda Hayden who was in a lot of Hammer Horror films is in this, and she's the main protagonist. She's, I wish, the, the one downside to this is it's, it's, it's basically a Satan-worshipping film, which were very popular, as we know, in the early 70s. 
But Linda Hayden's makeup was horrible. She's got this bushy unibrow. I don't know why they did that. It just looks ridiculous. Uh, other than that, though, I think it's a it's a it's a fun watch. Good film, and this has some really interesting special features. You know, more and more of the Hammer films are getting released, but quite a lot of people that made them and acted them are gone, unfortunately. Like Chris, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing and. Uh, so I'm interested in seeing, you don't see a whole lot of wealth of special features on these releases, so I'm, I'm very curious to see and check this out in November. <clears throat> and next up is a slasher film from Vestron. This is Slaughter Hot in 1986. Uh, Marty Ranson, what an iconic character, what a great film. Carolyn Monroe, of course, in this, playing a 30-year-old high school kid. <laughs> I, mean, just, I mean, you know, it, it, it works just because so, the whole thing is so ludicrous. But basically, the kids play a prank on Marty that goes bad. Uh, he's scarred for life, and he gets his revenge when they have a reunion. Um, fun. I like it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I give it a 7 out of 10. Um, yeah, it, of course, the big story here is that the actor that played Marty, Simon, can't remember his last name, but unfortunately he passed away right after the making of this. He had a lot of personal problems and uh, committed suicide. That's that's unfortunate, but it's a fun film. It was originally titled April Fool's Day, and they had to change it because, of course, there was another film coming out, April Fool's Day, and that's how you got Slaughter High. A lot of special features on this puppy. As you can see from Vestron. And thankfully I got the slip cover. By the way, there's pretty much everybody that I know has suffered the same dilemma that I've suffered, which is you've got one Vestron title without the damn slip cover. And of course it's gothic. Ironically enough, for me it's gothic. And I'm finding out more and more people also are I don't know what it is about that title, but it's coming without slipcovers left and right, so it's going to look like shit next to all the others. But anyway, that's it is what it is. I'm not going to spend seven or eight bucks on a damn slipcover. Just not going to do it. Then I went back to Nashi Volume Two and I watched one of my favorite films, Hunchback of the Morgue, 1975, 76. Uh, I, I have a propensity for hun the Hunchback. I think it's a character that doesn't get a lot of love, and I'm glad to see Paul Nashe, uh doing the Hunchback. It's a, it's this is a gory, gory film. The Hunchback's a gory film. Hunchback of the Morgue. The problem with the Hunchback in the Morgue is that um, Nashi. I don't know why he did this, but he he under he basically has no makeup. I mean, he's got the hump on his back, but he basically looks normal. I don't know why they didn't like do something like to disfigure his face or have an eyeball hanging down or something, but I don't know. It just it as much as he gets into the makeup and having dressed up as the Wolfman, I, I can't imagine why he went just with a normal human being look with the Hunchback. Hunchback of the Morgue is basically a love story as is the hunchback story in general and the hunchback kills off anybody that is uh, that goes after his love of his life or impacts the love of his life uh, pretty vicious too gory gory film one of my one of my favorites hunchback of the morgue okay well that is going to do it for day 17 and i appreciate you watching thanks